Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dan, Warpaint JKU. And as you can see, Maple Leaf behind me here is already got that Super Duty Dana 60 under it on leaf springs and it's on its tires. So in this quick video, I'm gonna talk you through what we did, how I figured it out, got everything to sit the way it does, and let you know what's coming next. You guys saw in a previous video that I had cut out the inside of the frame rail, kind of right near where the firewall sits on the front of the vehicle uh, to access an area and put a bracket that I was gonna make to hang the shackle for the rear of this front spring. So I started off with brackets from Rough Stuff Industries. I decided it was probably better and definitely a huge time savings to order them from them, being that they allow you to order them at your specific dimensions with specific measurements. Um, of course, because this is a custom application, the leaf spring bracket wasn't perfect. I did have to modify it some in order to get it fit. But once I did that, I tack welded it onto the frame and we test fit the spring. Now, quick tip, whenever you're doing custom work like this, you always wanna tack weld all of your brackets because it makes it a lot easier to actually cut through those tack welds with the grinding disc um, and be able to reposition things and move them a little bit. No one's really done this before, certainly not on YouTube, and there's really no kit showing you how to do this. So I kinda you know, used my prior knowledge and experience, but also, uh, tack welded things just to be sure it's just a really good habit to do whenever you're fabricating anything now once everything was test fit as you guys just saw and, and I kind of liked the position of everything my shackle angle was good as you saw in prior videos how I figured that out with the math um, everything fit really well so the next step was to uninstall everything all over again remove the overload spring off the bottom of our spring pack that did a couple of things it allowed our spring to sit a little lower lowering the ride height just a tiny bit but it also is going to allow the vehicle which sits because of the weight of the vehicle and the weight rating of the spring it's going to sit pretty flat right that spring is pretty flat well overload springs start to work once the spring is flat and they kind of prevent the spring from negative arching and we want our spring to negative arch during up travel because it's flat at ride height. So getting rid of that allows us to have that better flex and stability off road and have this spring perform the way that we want it to, which wasn't necessarily the way that it was originally designed to perform. Of course, once that was finished, it was time to basically finish weld the rest of, of the front end. Now, obviously there's some things left we're going to talk about that at the end of the video it's in pretty raw form here but uh you had to finish weld everything so we could get those springs on and set it back on its own weight after reinstalling the springs mounting tires airing those tires up it was now time to roll it over throw a brake rotor on the end of that axle mount that tire and then play a game with a couple of jacks and some jack stands to try to prevent this thing from falling off of itself and uh, basically set it on its own weight and take a look at where we're at. Mother of God. If you remember in the first video um, that I did with this front axle when we centered it under the vehicle, I basically put it under with a bunch of marks I made on cross members, marks on the floor, marks on the axle to kind of center everything, and that worked out perfectly. I used a tape measure off the factory bump stop tube that's still here on this factory bracket. All of that's going to get cut off in the future, but I basically measured from there directly over the axle to this mold line on the rubber tire on both sides. And you guessed it, it's exactly at 10 and a half inches, which means our axle is perfectly centered under the vehicle as we measured before. So what's left? 
Well, a whole bunch of things are actually left. Clearly, this front bumper is not in any shape to be uh, finished. So I got to make a front bumper. We got to make a winch plate. We got to get that installed. I'm going to remove this factory crash bar. We don't need it. It's just taking up space. Uh, it's just going to get in the way. I got to finish up the brakes, right? We got to make some some changes so that the, the big dual piston calipers uh, in the Jeep will push enough fluid to make those function. There's just a whole bunch of things, right? Custom drive shafts. I got to clean off the frame, mount shocks in there. Uh, all that kind of stuff is custom. So there's some stuff left to do to finish up this front end. But before we end this video and wrap it up, I do want you guys to take a look at the driver's side where the U-bolt actually goes under the axle and attaches basically to the leaf spring because it's kind of cool. Let's go check it out. You guys might remember from an earlier video that this Super Duty Dana 60 is out of a 2011, I think it was. It's definitely the 05 and newer model. And because of that, this originally had big radius arms on here and things like that. It was never meant to have leaf springs. And because of that, there isn't a whole lot of axle tube on this side. In fact, the amount of axle tube that's over here, if you go back to those videos, I actually cut two inches of casting off this axle tube to expose more of it to give us a place and mount our perch. Now, this U-bolt goes around the axle tube, so the diameter of that bend is gonna be a lot smaller than this one. This one is actually meant to go around the casted section, which is obviously a different diameter. But down here, because of the way that this axle is made, I actually marked it. I have to grind all that out, basically cut this off so that this U-bolt can fit tightly in there and basically kind of round out the section where this U-bolt is going to go. Probably not something that's overly necessary on an axle that was maybe meant for leaf springs, but obviously then the spacing of those springs and some of the other benefits we get from using this Super Duty Dana 60 wouldn't be there. This axle was available at a local junkyard, so we picked it up for a great price, and there you have it, guys, right? Rebuilt axle under a Jeep on leaf springs that was never meant to have them, on an axle that was never meant to have them, on leaf springs from a completely different vehicle, and uh, it all meshes together and works really well. So guys, to wrap it up, uh, I'm super happy with the way it's turned out so far. It's been a little bit of work, but obviously the front end is fairly simple. So I gotta get back to starting to make some steering for this rig, uh, hold those wheels steady, uh, and we're gonna start on the rear. Now, before I let you go, speaking of steering, that is a concern a lot of the time on a leaf spring rig because as you turn your wheels, your inside of your tire can contact that leaf spring. But war paint in the background is on the same axles, right? So it's the same width on the same size tire, also a 40. We're going to set it up with a very, very similar steering style with a hydraulic assist ram on the factory steering box. So... I was able to actually test it, right? I turned this axle right here to see how much steering angle we had. And then I went out and I started war paint and I did the same thing. I turned the steering wheel and saw how much that factory steering box actually allowed this vehicle uh, to steer. And I actually have more steering angle on this with the leap springs than I did on war paint. So steering is not gonna be a problem. The flex is not gonna be a problem. It's going to be comfortable because the shackle angle is exactly the way it's supposed to be. So guys, I'm just completely stoked and super happy with the way this has turned out um, so far, right? Obviously, a bunch more work to do. I thank you guys for all the support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because that's what's making the channel what it is. And we have some awesome giveaways and even vehicle giveaways coming in the future once the channel grows a little bit more. So stay tuned, guys. We got a ton of fun stuff happening. And uh, onto the rear axle.